Hi there. So thinking of task two ideas is often the first hurdle to improving your IELTS writing score. So I'm going to show you some tips about how to overcome this if it's a problem for you. My name is Lara Ryan. I've been an IELTS examiner. I've taught IELTS at the British Council. I've been teaching IELTS since 2010 and I am the founder of Complete Test Success. So the first thing I would say is don't search online when you cannot think of ideas. A lot of students do this because it's the natural thing to do. You don't know how to do something. You need some more information. You need ideas. You go online and you find the ideas. But the problem is you don't have the skill of thinking of ideas by yourself. So going and searching for them online is not making you better at thinking of ideas by yourself. It's just avoiding the problem. So what you need to do is you need to spend more time thinking of ideas. Give yourself enough time to think of ideas by yourself. You might need to go and take a break and come back later and you might have some ideas then. But searching online is not going to help you get better at this. You need to do it by yourself. OK, so then when you're trying to think of ideas, very often you're getting stuck because you can't imagine what you might do in this situation or how this would affect you. But if you can think from other people's perspectives, this can often help you think of ideas. So think about your different friends. You know, what would this friend say? What would that friend say? Maybe think about like, what would my uncle say about this? What would my sister say about this? Thinking about the different people you know and what you would imagine they would say will sometimes help you come up with ideas. Now, remember, the idea needs to be relevant and specific. It doesn't necessarily need to be an idea that you personally agree with. So don't worry about that. Another thing you can do is think of the perspectives of different people in society. Like what would a worker say? What would an employee say? What would a teacher say? What would a student say? You know, what would someone who's in the government say? What would a poor person say? What would a rich person say? Trying to think about all the different types of people in society and imagining what they would say. So it's not necessarily what you think, but is there any idea that's relevant and specific that you can use regardless of whether it's exactly what you would say yourself or something that you personally believe? Now, another thing that can often be helpful is to just make it clear in your head what two things are you comparing? A lot of task two questions are asking you to compare two things. So if you're not really clear about what those two things are, very often, this makes it difficult to think of your ideas. So let me show you a few questions and show you what the two things you're comparing are, and that will help you to do this by yourself in future. So here's the first question. Nowadays, for many people, shopping is a leisure activity rather than something that needs to be done out of necessity. What problems can this cause? OK, so in this question, you're comparing people who like to go shopping for fun versus people who don't like to go shopping for fun. So what problems will these people have in comparison with these people? These people will probably spend more money than these people. These people will buy things that they don't need compared to these people. These people will probably have less clutter and less rubbish that they're throwing out compared to these people. So what you're really doing is you're comparing these two people and you're imagining in what way is life better for these people? In what way is life worse for these people? And once you start thinking of it that way, you can often come up with ideas that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Here's another question. In the modern world, it's important for individuals to know how to manage their personal finances well. Some argue that this skill should be taught at school. To what extent do you agree or disagree? OK, so this time we're comparing people who learned to do this at school with people who didn't learn to do this at school. In what ways will life be better for these people? In what way will life be better for these people? And in the same way, in what ways will life be worse for these people? And in what ways will life be worse for these people? So you're imagining these people, how life will be different for them and coming up with things that are good and better for each one. And again, by, sh by making it clear what things you're comparing, it's easier to come up with ideas. We'll look at one more. As technology continues to improve, it replaces an increasing number of jobs that used to be done manually, such as car assembly and bank transactions. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this situation. OK, so again, we're comparing two things. This time we're comparing, let's say, a factory where all of the work is done manually and a factory where all of the work is done by machines. Now. What, again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to compare like in what ways is this better, in what ways is that better. But you can also consider it from different people's perspectives. So 
why would the government like this better? Why would the government like that better? Why would the factory owner like this better? Why would the factory owner like this better? Why would the employee like this better? Why would the employee like that better? So again, you can apply both of those strategies. A, making it clear what you're comparing and then imagining what different people would say about this same situation. And again, you don't need to agree with the idea you come up with. You might say the factory, the factory owner will make more money. And maybe you don't think that's a good thing, but that idea is relevant and specific so we can use it. So again, applying both strategies together is another way to help you think of ideas for task two. Another thing I tell my students is to try and bring it down to earth. So what happens with a lot of students is they're trying to imagine everybody in their country, every factory in their country, how it applies to everybody. But sometimes when you're imagining it as something that's kind of up in the sky, it's difficult to think about it in a direct way. But then you bring it down to earth and just think about, well, what are your experiences? Have you worked somewhere where there is a lot of machinery being used? Have you worked where there's very little machinery being used? You know, have you purchased something from a factory which is used, which is producing by machinery as opposed to a factory which is producing things manually? Try to think of your experiences of the world, places you've been, people you know, and try to apply more your own personal experiences of what's happened in your life as opposed to something imaginary up in the sky. Okay, and the final thing then is to practice planning. So generating ideas, thinking of ideas for task two, this is a skill. And if the problem is you don't have that skill, well, you need to develop it by doing it more often. So what I would recommend is, let's say if you wrote one essay, it would take you 40 minutes. But in that time, you could plan three or four or five essays. So if your problem is that you're not good at thinking of ideas, instead of writing lots of essays, write lots of essay plans. Because when you're planning the essay, that's where you're actually developing the skill of thinking of ideas. So do lots and lots of essay planning that will give you lots and lots of practice of thinking of ideas for task two. The more you do it, the better you'll get, the more appropriate your ideas will be, the faster you'll think of ideas. So by practicing, this is definitely the best thing you can do to improve your skill. Okay, and that's pretty much it for this lesson. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. If you want one-on-one -on -one support, make sure to reach out and see you next time. Bye-bye.